if you don't want to do something, any excuse will do, and there will be a thousand of them. If you want to do something, you only need one good reason, and that will be all that it takes. Hi, this is Barry Phillips with 10-Minute Torah, day number five of the Torah portion, Devarim, meaning words. Got one verse today, chapter 2, verse 3. We read it yesterday, but let's read it again today. It says that Yahweh spoke to them, saying, You have gone around this mountain long enough. Turn northward. Yesterday, we began to talk about the idea of why do people go round and round mountains? Why do we get into the rut routines? Why do we find ourselves only in that which is familiar to us? The reason that we gave yesterday was that we don't want to re release ourselves from the revelation at the mountain. Uh, there was a revival that breaks out there, and no one wants to get away from it. We have uh, examples of this in Scripture. We have Moshe. He could have encamped at the burning bush and said, you know, nowhere else in the world is Yah revealing his name. I'm going to stay right here. Noah had to eventually leave the ark, even though he hadn't been on ground for a year. Um, there was uh, glory and revelation and celebration when David killed Goliath, and he could have just said, done my part. Man, does it get any bigger a battle than this? I don't know what else there's left for me to do. But he stayed in the game. <laughs> and had many, many more battles to fight. So why is it then that we want to camp out around the mountain and keep going around and around? A second reason is to leave the mountain requires a change of mind. Reason one, we don't want to lose the revelation and the outpouring, the, the experience that we've had. Number two, it's a different mindset to move away from that which is familiar to us, that which we already know, that which we're already capable of doing, and venture out into the unknown. Avram had to leave Ur of the Chaldees in order to get the blessing and the revelation that the land was his. He may have had a home, Two camel garage there in Ur, been well situated. Yah said, I don't want you just to have a house, I want to give you the land. You and your descendants, the entire land. The, uh, the reality is the vision that Yah has for us is far bigger, far bigger than what we think we have the capacity to handle. So if it's overwhelming, how do we receive it? It requires a change of mind. We have to think differently. You can't stay in the same mental focus, the same rut and routine of considering things and go any further. We have to learn to ask meaningful, hard to answer questions, probing questions, difficult questions, and not be satisfied with the first answer that may come along. It may sound reasonable. We may say, well, that's just it. That's, And someone may try to placate you or pass you off or give you a pat answer. When your spirit is rising up inside of you and saying, that's not it. You need to look again. There's more to this. We should learn to listen to that uh, that spiritual voice, the voice of the Ruach Kodesh, the Holy Spirit, and say, well, show me. Show me where to look. Show me who to ask. Show me where to dig. And so there is this mindset that was prevalent among the nation of Israel. We can't. The first generation came to the same location, to the same border, to the same opportunity of going over and receiving the land. They went over, they looked around, they came back with a report that said, 
It's everything Moshe said it was going to be, but we're not able to take that. That's that's just too much for us. We're underqualified. Uh, they're overqualified, and we just we would just be better off going back where we came from. Of course, you know the story of how judgment then proceeded to fall out on that generation until they were destroyed. If you say you can't, then you won't. That's as simple as if you think you can't do something, you won't do it. Matter of fact, saying I can't is another way of saying I won't. I'm not going to. I will not. That's a great excuse. If something is overwhelming, if something is beyond you, if something is more than your talent, skill, and abilities are able to give to you or enable you to handle, instead of trusting Yod to say, I believe you uh, to grow into this, Yod saying to us, you will grow, you will mature, you will increase your capacity for reception. I will get you there. We say, I can't. In other words, I will not. Again, all I need is one good excuse why I can't and I won't. And the pressure is off. Go ask somebody else. That's what Moshe argued. I can't. I don't know how to speak. Please don't send me back there. Please ask somebody else. I wouldn't listen to him, thankfully. And here we are until I ventured outside the walls of churchdom. I had no idea that I could survive without all of the peers and the acquaintances and the working relationships that I had developed over a 20-year period of time. Make no mistake about it. I preached a lot of sermons. I went to a lot of small churches I I worked hard at developing friendships. I studied and showed myself approved. I took opportunities where they presented themselves. I tried to make opportunities where the door was shut. I got people to help me. I had people praying for me. And finally, I got to a place in the denomination that I was a part of where I was beginning to get somewhere. So it would seem, and that's when Yah says, it's time to go. I thought, how in the world will I ever function? I I won't have a consistent salary. I just got a house. Father, what am I going to do? I got a mortgage to pay now. I got kids at home that I'm responsible for. What am I going to do? Yah said, trust me. I had no idea that I could get along without the religious identities and tags that were easy. Hey, brother, what kind of uh, religion are you? I'm Pentecostal. Really? Yeah, Church of God. Hallelujah. And I could easily identify myself. When people ask me that same question now, it's like, not real sure what tag you would be willing to accept. And I tried to reveal myself. I'm a Hebrew. Oh, what? Oh, you're Jewish. Well, no, not really. (laughs) And the confused faces and the basic conversation begins. But do I have to have a tag to announce how I believe? I am a follower of Yeshua of Nazareth. And I keep all of the commands that he has taught to us found in the first five books of the Bible. Oh, do they know what that means? No. (laughs) But I have learned to get along. My home is being paid for. My children grew up and they're okay. We have built a congregation. I've lost touch with a lot of previous peers. I've developed new relationships and it's okay but it took a willingness on my part to say, yes, I will. I only need one good reason. You asked, and I will follow. You can do the same, and we will all do the same again. Shabbat Shalom.
May your house be filled with the light, the love, and the joy of the Messiah. We look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you.